Okay, we're here for the HSP Discovery Workshop. And I'm gonna intro myself just because some people watching this might not really know me from a bar of soap. So I'm just gonna let everybody know I'm Jen Turnham and I use my Bachelor of Psychology degree to help HSP extrovert women thrive and shine their light bright in the world. And it's my mission to also educate the world about how amazing HSP extroverts in particular are, because I think the world, particularly with everything that's going on at the moment, is in dire need of HSPs and our traits. The challenges. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list. It's just the main ones. It's not all of them. And I'm not suggesting we've got a super huge list of challenges. <laughs> we have probably got the same amount of challenges as non-HSPs, but I just wanted to go through the main ones that I see come up over and over again. So I'm just going to describe these very briefly because basically each one of these could be a topic for a whole separate workshop. So I'm just going to go into them in like just very briefly so that you're kind of aware of them. But also please know that all of these can be overcome if we do the work. And that's what I said about how we move towards becoming an evolved HSP is by doing the work to overcome these challenges so we can then live more into our strengths. So the first one is overthinking. I think that's probably quite obvious to all of you. Overthinking, we get stuck in our head, we overanalyze, we ruminate, we go round and round in circles. Quick tip to overcome overthinking is take some action. So whether it be take some action on that topic that you're overthinking about, or just take some action to clean the house or go for a walk in nature, because then that can help you get out of your head because your body's focusing on what you're physically doing as opposed to what's in your head. And it can be helpful to have a bit of a list of things that you know that you can do that help you get out of your head because you have to focus on what you're doing, for example. So for me, block therapy, I've talked to some of you about block therapy that I do. That's very good for me because partly I'm in pain when we're doing it. So I have to, and I have to focus on my diaphragmatic breathing. So the pain and the breathing is enough to get me out of my head every time. So it has quite a meditative effect. So think of things that you could do for yourself when you recognize overthinking to kind of pull yourself out of it. The second big one is taking things personally. This is due to our depth of processing and our sensitive to subtlety. So we pick up things that other people don't. And this is basically why I developed my tools to stop taking things personally training, which is a mini, a mini training, kind of similar to this workshop where I just talk, talk you through what it is, why it happens and give you some tools to overcome it. So this is an, most of these challenges, as I said, are examples of when we're unevolved as a HSP. So these things can rule our life if we don't work to overcome them. Third one is we have, we do too much. We have a tendency to overload our plate. Now this is due to positive reasons though, but the result isn't so helpful often for us. So it's due to our increased emotional reaction. So we get excited. Plus it's also happens because of our giving nature. We have an appetite for learning. So what happens is we tend to perhaps take on more than we should because we either can't say no to people or we get excited about something. So we just add another thing and then, oh, we see something online. Oh, that looks like a great course. Oh, I'm going to do that too. Oh, and I'll also offer to help my friend set up for her 50th birthday party. Oh, I'll do this as well. So it comes from a positive place. But I think when we're talking about that seesaw and trying to keep things in balance and not live in overwhelm which is almost like I say overwhelm is kind of overstimulation when you've then tipped over the edge it's like you've fallen off the edge of the overstimulation cliff and now you're in overwhelm so if you don't want to live in overwhelm then recognizing that we have this tendency to do too much and learning to say no is very helpful and just a quick tip on that is if you recognize you need to so say no more a default response that you can start to practice and use in every situation when somebody's asking you for something, the default response can be, not really sure about that, would love to help, let me check my diary. And if you say that to every single person that asks you, asks something of you, 
it then makes it easier to say no, because then you can go away, you can objectively look at how many things you've got on your plate. And then if you do have to say no, you can often do that in an email or a text message because you're just getting back to them, which then takes the fear or a bit of the fear out of having to say no to someone, whereas saying no in that moment can be quite difficult for HSPs. The fourth challenge, we have issues with self-esteem, self-doubt and not feeling good enough. And this is usually comes from a lack of boundaries because we've allowed people to treat us badly and take advantage of us, which then results in our self-esteem plummeting and these feelings of not being good enough can also come from that whole sense of not really belonging, not really fitting in anywhere, which then, then can also lead to that feeling of not good enough because we know we're different. But the good news about this one is because I mentioned earlier about that vantage sensitivity that we have, we can benefit more quickly from interventions like coaching and therapy. So that's a, a big plus is recognizing that there's work to do. And then once we start doing the work, the benefits happen much faster than they would for a non HSP. The last one is our, our need, the seesaw I was talking about. So we struggle to balance our need for external stimulation or the peopling side of things, as I call it, and overstimulation. So if you can record, once you recognize it, that's kind of this seesaw that we constantly have to balance, that's when you can start to kind of proactively balance that rather than wait till it's completely out of whack before you do anything about it. And as I said at the beginning of this section, overcoming these challenges and living into our strengths is how I believe we become evolved HSPs. And it is possible. And it's able to happen quicker than if we weren't HSPs. So that's a, a real plus as well. So that's kind of the main thing I wanted you to take from the challenges section is that, yes, they're there. And, but the thing is we can do something about them and we can overcome them. And that doesn't mean, let's say, taking things personally. It doesn't mean that you'll never take anything personally ever again once you've done the work. It just means that it won't consume you. So, for example, what I do now is when I recognise that I've taken something personally, I catch it quicker, which means I can stop the overthinking faster and then I can talk myself out of it using the tools that I teach in the tools to stop taking things personally. So it's not that I never take anything personally. It's just that I catch it, I fix it so that it, does, it doesn't consume me for hours and days and weeks like it might potentially have done before I did the work, if that makes sense. So any questions about the challenges? No, all good, I must be covering everything pretty well then, excellent.